So I'm wondering if that's the, the, if that is one of those 40, uh, album releases and i don't think it is i don't think your appearances are are of of, of the of, of the almost 40 albums that you've had in the release and the 10 million sales oh, um, yeah. I, I i really don't think it is because folks you you've done so much of this stuff on your own whether it's with solo albums or, or, or some of the bands that you've done but it's mostly been solo records um yeah it's the a newest solo records, one yeah the newest one is shape shifting and um I wanted to talk a little bit about that because you put that out this year, but at the same time, you've actually released something for the fans on Satriani.com, which we're going to talk about and give you when we, when we put out your socials and stuff, but you put out a new uh, sort of concept called uh, stripped X three, which has the backing tracks of shape shifting black swans and wormhole wizards and is there love in space so three different albums three different complete eras but yeah yeah guys if you haven't gone on satriani.com to check this out whether you're a guitarist and you just want to you want to hear these backing tracks which is coming something special and play over it yourself or you just want to appreciate the people that appreciate joe you got to go check out uh, this album. So tell us about both uh, Shape Shifting and this new Striped uh, X3. So, yeah, it's, you know, it goes back to uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Steve, Steve, I, uh, my good buddy, um, you know, decided to put out the, the Vi uh, Jewel Box and he started putting the backing tracks out. And I always joked with him that I was going to replace all the melodies and solos and release the album as a Joe Satriani record. But uh, <laughs> so I had this feeling like, well, I, you know, this, it costs so much money to actually create the backing tracks. That's where you spend most of the time and money is, you know, hiring all these musicians and the studio and everything. And the melody and solo bits go on just as everyone leaves and, and you're running out of money, you know? <laughs> so right. uh, I, I like thought, why a would movie. I... The music always comes last and when you're making yeah, a so... movie, it's like... They... <laughs> Why would I be giving these things away? But then I, I started to think, no, this is totally different. I, I need to get over this. After I got, got over the, the, you know, my conceptual problem of handing mm -hmm. over to the fans these, these uh, precious backing tracks, you know, uh, that I practice to all the time, you know, when I'm getting ready for a tour, I got real excited about putting them together. And as you noted, you know, just sort of showing the fans the three different eras and and it illustrates how differently i approach each record um and i i wanted them somehow to relate to each other but at the same time i did want to pick three that were wildly different in terms of where they were recorded who was on the record uh who was helping me produce um all that kind of stuff and maybe conceptually what i was thinking about at the time in terms of the writing um the concept for getting other people to play on it was really the brainchild of my webmaster at Chime Interactive, John Luini. And he kind of surprised me with this idea by saying, hey, we've asked, you know, Steve Vai and Phil Campbell and Phil Collin, Bumblefoot, yeah. Laurie, and all these people I, I, to come and just play whatever they want. In other words, don't try to play Joe, just do whatever you want. Like it's a, it's a rehearsal backing track or something. And what we've been getting has been so cool because, you know, e even like, of course, you can't do anything that Steve does because he's just like a wizard. He just, yeah. whatever he touches, he makes it his own thing, you know. Uh, but then there are the, these younger players uh, like like Alyssa and, and Joshua. Alyssa and they, Day, and you had Bumblefoot on it as well, I saw. You know, they, the stuff that they do, I'll never be able to do. So it was just so <laughs> cool to see them like extrapolate you know on these uh these simple structures and sh and show me you know like there's so much more you can do and that's really what it illustrates what these backing tracks are good for really is for exploration you know in, in many well, ways well you got to go check it out folks because it's it's on satriani.com i checked out a bunch of these uh, clips because you can get a real nice taste of it you can see phil collin uh playing from def leppard uh, as well as all the other names even, even some uh i want to say old schoolers because i love sammy but <laughs> sammy gets a taste on it too as well sammy gets in on the action and uh yeah. this is striped x3 and and i think the way you packaged it on your site again going back to that business mindset is really smart oh, yeah. because i should you, show this then, you have right? some of that because 
Well, for, first that's of all, the thing I never wanted to talk about. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, here's the amazing. here's the case, right? You snap it open. This is just a, a mock up, you know. But and then you get the guitar itself. Whoa. Oh, that's, that's a you know? that's a small you know? Joe Satriani uh, yeah. signature series. But it's not, it folks. It's your it's your <laughs> USB stick that has that's the entire right. albums all on it, um, included with ri original liner notes and credits, and it's all packaged within a replica Joe Satriani Ibanez guitar. Uh, in a yeah. custom case. So that's the first time people have seen it in the flesh. That's right. Holding it. I love it. Yeah, Sorry, I think they wanted me to make a like a little uh, infomercial about it, but obviously I have no <laughs> skill at this. <laughs> think of us as like the, the infomercial of rock and roll right now because uh, that's uh, that's quite awesome that they that you have that. And uh...